<laughs> looks more like a angry little alien or something. I don't know what that is. But, uh, you know, it's my depiction of a church building. Okay. Over here, same thing. You know, I'll just draw kind of, there's a steeple, you know. There's your cross, front door, whatever, you know. You get the idea. <laughs> I'm not going to bother trying to draw real good buildings here or anything. But the point is, this group and this group over here, they like to be around people that are like themselves. Because then they say, uh, they're not any better than I am. Hey, uh, our pastor, Jack Hiles, he's, uh, I know he's doing some things. I know he's pulling some strings. You see how much money that guy has? It's not so bad if I have a lot of money and I have occasional little uh, fling on the side there with my marriage. After all, we all believe in Jesus. This side over here, we're all working to get to the same place. We're all part of this Amish community. This Catholic, uh, the one true church. You see? They like to surround themselves with other people. This group right here says, me and Jesus Christ. Personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And a relationship that, uh, let me show you another verse here. First Corinthians chapter 11 verses uh, 31 and 32 it says for if we would judge ourselves we should not be judged but when we are judged we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world personal relationship. We can deal personally with the Lord and say, okay, Lord, tell me how I should judge myself. See, a true Christian will do that. Why? You came to the end of yourself at salvation. So you realize, I'm no good. I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. You say, well, Lord's doing things through me, but I still am rotten and still am corrupt. I'm still struggling with certain sins. I still need to get rid of these certain sins. There's going to be that struggle there. Okay? We learn to judge ourselves. You see? And we don't say, I'm going to judge myself by the people out there in my church building. And if I don't like the particular church building that I'm going to, I'll find one that suits me. Like these two groups of hypocrites do. Right here. You see? And I'm going to hire a man, a pastor, actually a hireling, I'm going to pay a man to not judge certain sins. You see? Those are the two groups that do that. This group here is personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Why? Again, you've come to the Lord broken. You come and you say, I'm a sinner. Okay? I put my faith in you. Now tell me what I need to do to clean up my life. You know? I mean, go back to the, the slave days. Right? You get this slave and they put him up on the block. Here he is up there for sale. You know, his hands are, are bound like this and he's got his hands down like this or something. And he's got a the yoke around his neck. And a lot of times they weren't wearing any clothes. I'm sure it was pretty, very, very humiliating for the slaves and things. But, you know, and it was going on in Africa too before it ever came to America. You know, I'm not saying it was always just and always wonderful and good and things. I mean, there was some really bad stuff with slavery. But the point is, the Lord gives that as a picture of you when you get saved. Take my yoke and learn of me. You see? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Are you bought with a price? Did God purchase you? He did if you came like this. If you came and said, oh, that's okay. It's okay. I'll cure myself. Or, well, I'll say that I'm sick, but uh, I don't really want the cure. I'll just say, oh, yes, we're all sinners. And I... Of course, believe in Jesus, but uh, don't tell me about my sins because I don't want to give them up. You see, this guy says, I'm going to get in by my own good, righteous works. I'm a good person. This guy says, I'll pretend that I'm a Christian, but don't you dare judge my sins. This one here in the middle says, I'm a sinner. I want help getting out of the thing. And that slave standing there on the block, hands bound, has his eyes cast down, 
doesn't have a thing on. He comes totally broken. And some master out there says, I'll buy him. Have you come to the Lord totally broken? Because that's the only type that the Lord's interested in. He's not interested in either of these two groups here or there. He's not interested in that. And uh, as the Lord's bondservant, when you come here, you're still going to mess up. You're still going to make mistakes. But you know who your master is, who your Lord is. Do you pray to the Lord Jesus? Oh, that's Lordship salvation. Why don't you shut up? Until you can find me a scripture in the King James Bible that uses the term Lordship salvation or even implies it even implies this thing of it's somehow this heresy to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and have Him tell you what to do. You know? And again, this one heretic, this uh, Alex from Canada, the, uh, Talking for Truth or something like that, I think his YouTube name is, he said that I'm backloading works into, into salvation. I'm, I'm saying that it's not works to be saved, but I'm putting the works in after salvation. Give me some scripture. Not one verse of scripture quoted. None. See what they're trying to do? These heretics right here are trying, they're attacking with their philosophies. They're trying to spoil Bible-believing Christians and swing them over to this side right here. It's just disgusting. It makes me very, very angry. So, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I was going to say in this study. I mean, you know, I could keep going on and on and on and on and on about this thing and debating these people, but it's just like... It's, it's getting so ridiculous anymore. Um, if you have come to the Lord broken and said, okay, I understand that I'm a sinner. I understand no matter what cures I've tried, uh, the sickness remains. It's, it's, it's always going to be there, but I just wish I could get some relief. You come to the Lord, you come to the physician in need of being healed. He will heal you, okay? You're still going to struggle, okay? I mean, how many people have gotten a cold, have gotten a headache or whatever else, and you never get another one? Of course not. But when you learn, okay, here's the cure. Here is the physician that can cure me of my sins. He can cure me there and say, okay, I've struggled with pornography and I'm saved now. Okay, Lord, please cure me. The Lord says, okay. Here's what you need to do. You need to read the Word. You need to this. You, you know, to be diligent about witnessing. You need to replace the addiction of pornography with the, being addicted to the Word, being addicted to the right kind of music. You listen to rock music, your goose is cooked. Okay. Um, I knew a, a guy the one time I said, if you're tempted every time you get online, stop getting online. So, oh, I need to go online for ministry. If you have a problem with pornography, you need to take drastic action. But you see, you get saved and you say, Oh, I'm saved now and things I I have relief from this this addiction to pornography. And all of a sudden, up, oh, you know, you went outside and got a cold again, so to speak. Got that sickness back in you again. You fall into sin again and you mess up. How do you feel when you mess up? Because if you're over on this side, it won't even bother you. Just like these Satanists over here that I was out preaching against them, there they don't have any conviction at all. This guy that came up to me, and he, you know, one of the guitar players, and he said, I'm not going to agree with you. You know why? Because he's lost. He believes, but he has had no faith and repentance. The little hireling of this building over here, he's lost. There's no conviction of sin. You see? There's nothing there saying, I want to get rid of this. But when you are saved and you sin, when you mess up, you're going to talk like Paul did in Romans chapter 7. Read Romans chapter 7. You know, if you're struggling with some kind of a sin as a Christian and you feel that guilt, you're just like, I mean, let, let's, let's go to Romans chapter 7. I keep saying about it. Let's, let's actually go there and read it. You know, you need to just take some time and hear the scriptures being read to you. Yeah, I, I just I wanted to put this thing together because I'm just getting so sick and tired of all these people coming out. Lordship salvation, Lordship salvation. I reject the term Lordship salvation, okay? You can't show it to me from the King James Bible. I define it one way, you define it another way to attack me. So, okay, I'm done with it. Romans chapter 7. 
Verse 15. No, let's start at verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Written by Paul. Sin will still dwell in you. Okay? It's kind of like you have cancer and... It just kind of relapses every once in a while, and you have to continually doing, do the, the cure to keep that cancer suppressed. And if you don't do the cure, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse, and it's eventually going to kill you. That's what sin is. You have sin dwelling in, in your flesh. Let's continue. We'll see this. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law, serve the law of God, but with the flesh... The law of sin. Okay? You will struggle with sin the rest of your life. Let me write this scripture down here so we don't forget it. You are going to struggle with sin until you go to be with the Lord. That's just the way it is. Okay? That is why the Christian life is a life of repentance. You do not have to repent to stay saved. You do not have to Repent and turn from all sin before salvation. You do not have to repent and turn from all sin after salvation. Okay? You can make a mess of your life. I understand that. All right? Again, I have never preached this thing that I'm getting accused of. Lordship salvation. Oh, Lordship salvation. I have never preached that thing. All right? And I'm just, I am so fed up with this whole thing. Repentance has to be part of your salvation. If it is not there, if there is no new creature in Christ Jesus, if you cannot point to a point in time in your life where you can say, my testimony is... I mean, what, what would the testimony be of some of these, like these liars over here or some of these other people? You know, I was a heavy metal, tattooed heavy metal, uh, drunken fornicator, and um, I heard that Jesus died for my sins, and so I put my belief, you know, put my faith in Jesus and, uh, well, I gave up the fornication and drunkenness, but uh, I'm still a tattooed heavy metal rock and roll Satanist. <laughs> what? You know? Um, no, it doesn't work that way. Okay? Uh, you got to give that stuff up. The Lord will eventually have you give that stuff up. It might not happen right away. The Lord will, you know, I understand there are people that are, that are on the path, so to speak, the path of sanctification. You know, they call it progressive sanctification or something like that. You come up with all these little fancy terms and stuff. You know, I understand. It might take you a while. All right. Again, I understand that. I've I've always talked about that. But what I'm saying is when you get somebody who is over on this side and they hate the truth, they can't stand the truth, they hate the King James Bible, they, are, they believe all kinds of false doctrine, there's no desire for repentance, there's no desire to, to change anything, then they're over here. They have a false profession of faith and they will preach against this right here and try to claim that true salvation is works. That's the way this whole thing is happening. All right? And ironically, these people here will also attack this group. Those that are doing good works, they will attack here. And they will not attack so much this side over here. I've seen that too. Well, I can't judge a man, you know, if, he's, if he says he believes and blah, 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 you know, whatever, and things. So, uh trying to think if there's any other points that I'm going to make in this study. Uh, like I said, I, I just keep going on and on and on with this. But uh, if you get it, if you, you know, as we get closer to the catching away of the bride of Christ, um, I realize that the falling away is getting worse and worse. I mean, you know, if you take 
uh, trying to look for something to, you know, this, if you take this pencil here and you drop it, you know, um, well, I shouldn't say drop it. You know, if you, if you fall away, so to speak, that pencil, I understand it goes the same speed, you know, that whole thing there. But I'm saying if this, if this pencil, uh, when it falls away, the farther away it gets from my hand, the harder it's going to be for me to get that thing, okay, for me to slow it down. And that's the way I'm seeing this thing with my ministry. Uh, the Lord called me into this ministry. I am not a false prophet. Again, you know, shut up if you're trying to say that. That, that just ticks me off. All that the Lord's done through this ministry, all the Lord's done for us and stuff, I just, I get so sick and tired of that. It just, you can disagree with me. I mean, good night. I, we have, I, there's many brethren out there I disagree with on certain issues and stuff like that. And, and I don't call you false brethren or something like this. I mean, Fenninger, Ed Fenninger, I've disagreed with that guy for years. And I just was like, okay, leave him alone. But then when I see he's just attacking me by name and it's just like, people that I consider friends and he's drawing them away and stuff, drawing them over to this satanic heresy over here. It's just like, okay, all right, all right. Don't listen to Ed Fenninger. I mean, if you do, whatever. I can't stop people from listening to false prophets, but he's false. He has been for a very, very, very long time. He's got all kinds of problems. Stay away from the guy, okay? But I see this thing. More and more Christians are falling away. And it used to be I could go like this and grab him quick. You know, I'm not going to try to do it because I'm, you know, if I go oh, like that, okay, I got it. I caught it, you know. But if I let the thing go to the floor, oh, I didn't get it. And that's what I see with more and more Christians. Uh, more and more people are, are falling away and just getting so messed up. So very, very, very messed up. And I'm going to be doing a study on in the future about the uh, benefits of being a stubborn Christian. <laughs> Something to that effect. I'm not sure what it's going to be called yet. But uh, we need to get stubborn as Christians and just simply say the things that we have learned and been assured of, I'm going to continue in them. I'm going to be steadfast. I'm not going to move. You're not going to, you're not going to move me one inch on this salvation issue uh, because I was over here for a long time. I was never over there thinking I could be good enough, that I could work my way to heaven and stuff like that, but I was definitely over here. I had a profession and it was a false profession because there were certain sins I just didn't like anybody kicking. And rock and roll and heavy metal was one of them. Well, I didn't like that at all. I remember being a youth and getting all ticked off because some preacher came into the Babel building I was raised in and he said that he didn't like Christian rock. And I was just like, oh, I was, I was enraged. You know, and I used the same arguments as these devil-possessed people over here did, you know, on me and my wife, you know. And uh, I remember I was just so mad about that. And if somebody had said to me back then, hey, that stuff's wicked, it's a sin, I got mad. Say, you need to give that stuff up when you get saved. I'd have said, no, I'm not going to give that stuff up. But I'll tell you what, when I finally came to the Lord broken, when the Lord finally saw my condition as that slave, that bond servant, hands tied there and just going, I'm, t I'm bound in sin, I have no way, I can't get out of it. I just can't do anything about this. But I want out. Uh, won't somebody buy me? I was sick. I needed the physician. You see? And the Lord bought me with His precious blood because I came to Him the right way. I came to Him broken. I didn't come with my self-righteous pride saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe in Jesus, but I'm just going to continue in my sin and just pretend that God doesn't care. I didn't do that. And I didn't think that I was good enough to get to heaven by my own righteousness. See? I was finally broken. I came to the Lord and I said, okay, Lord, you know, whatever I have, it's, it's yours. I mean, uh, you just tell me what to do from here on out. I got saved and I burned all of my Christian rock along with my secular rock, heavy metal, rap even. I even listened to rap, some rap music, believe it or not. Um, I got rid of it. Um, again, my wife and I were talking about this. You know, we both had very foul mouths, uh, a lot of profanity and things like that. And boy, you get saved and it just like, whoop, it changes. It changes, you know, and, and uh, I struggled with pornography for a little bit after I was saved. You know, I'll, I'll admit to that, you know, and, and I'd go for a couple months and I'd fall back into it. And I'd be like, oh man. And I just felt like just the scum of the earth. I didn't feel like that before. 
back when I was over here, I was trying to justify it. You know, when I was a youth, I was about 17 or so years old, I think, right around that time, maybe 15 to 17, somewhere in there. I don't remember the exact year, but I can still remember sitting in a Babel building, you know, in my church that I grew up in. And I remember sitting there and having the thought cross my mind, you know, I really wish that God didn't exist so that there wouldn't be anything wrong with looking at pornography. Yeah, I believe that way. You see, I had a profession of faith. I prayed a prayer. You know, I, I believed, and I really sincerely did believe too, by the way. I'm not just saying it was just this fake little blah, blah, blah. You know, it was fake because I wasn't broken. But, uh, you know, I believed. I truly believed. And I never fornicated that entire time, you know, with in the flesh. I mean, looking at pornography, you can make the argument there. But um, I never got drunk. Uh, I never did drugs. I smoked one time, and that was really a big mistake, and I never did it after that. But uh, I lived pretty clean. But I had profanity problem and, and uh, pornography addiction and, and a whole lot of other things, covetousness and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, that was as a professing Christian. But when I finally came to the Lord broken, I came to Him for salvation, things changed. And now that profanity that I used to not have a problem speaking when I was over here, now it just cuts me like a knife. I hate to hear profanity. The music that I used to love when I was over here, now it drives me insane. Now it's just like, shut it off. Because I know what it is. I've studied it. I've studied the occult. I know what they're singing about. You know, like I said in, in my video, the street preaching video, the Hotel California thing. I mean, I didn't show the picture of it, but I mean, you can look it up. Look it up. The Eagles, the, the song Hotel California was about, it's Hotel California is a, a, a euphemism for the satanic church, the church of Satan, founded by Antor, Anton Sandor LaVey. Okay, back in 1966, I think it was. Chose that year, you know, on purpose. But, and in the in the video, you know, or in the, on the album cover, and again, just go to Google Images. You can look it up. Just type Hotel California, you know, Eagles or whatever, you know, Anton LaVey. And you'll see there's a, a motel, like hotel, the thing there, and the band down in the front. And there's a guy up in the window kind of like looking out like this. I think it's, I think he has his arm up if I remember correctly. But, you know, he's up there and he's looking down like this. It's Anton LaVey. You know? And the, the, the st song that these guys started singing when they were over here was uh, the um, House of the Rising Sun. You know? That's the song that they were singing. The House of the Rising Sun is about a brothel, a prostitution house. But they're going to take that and going to give it to the Lord for His glory. You know? I mean, it's insane. And you say, well, why would they do a thing like that? Because they have belief. They believe that they're saved. And yet there's no works made for repentance. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. Being corrupt and abominable, and unto every good work, reprobate. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, I'm going to clarify this one more time. And then I'm done with this study, and I'm not going to preach on repentance anymore. I'm going to preach the gospel as the Bible teaches it, as you that are saved, you understand it. And these Jesuit ministers of Satan, whatever you want to call them, whoever they are, if you accuse me of lordship salvation, you are not a Bible believer because you are using terms that do not appear in the King James Bible. So you're not a Bible believer. And if you accuse me of lordship salvation, this thing of, of whatever the little thing is that you've created over here, if you accuse me of it, you're going to be blocked from the channel because I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of liars like Ed Fenninger and a lot of these others coming out and attacking me, attacking me personally, trying to, to draw away people, you know, and that's again, that's what they do, right? And, you know, well, let me, okay, let me just go there really quickly like I said this this is, study is just a uh, it's just like building up within me and I'm just like I'm, I'm just getting so sick and tired of this that's why I'm doing it. it's not really organized but uh, Acts chapter 20 verses 28 uh, through 32 
it says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which I have done, uh, which he hath purchased with his own blood. And I don't say that out of, out of pride, by the way. I have fed people. I've fed the flock of God. I have so, had so many people, right? And, you know, Brother Brian, you know, I've learned more from your ministry in three weeks than I learned in 50 years of being, you know, going to church buildings. Okay? It's it, over and over and over and over and over again. All right? It, so people come out and they say, oh, you, actually, you're a false prophet. You're not really even saved and stuff. Oh, shut up. Okay? Just shut up. I get sick and tired of that. All right? It just... And again, I understand, you know, it's the devil trying to discourage me and all that. I, I get it. But it says there, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Or have you been purchased by God? This is the only type he's interested in. When God sees this or sees that, he says, no, thank you. Not interested. Verse 29, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. You see it? Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. That's the group. If you want to get to heaven, this is the way you do it. If you want to go to hell... Trust in your own righteous acts or pretend that you believe Jesus and continue in your sin without any conviction. Okay? I mean, you know, you see people and they say, uh, you know, you get a Catholic priest and you say, uh, how on earth could he, you know, do this terrible thing to this child? You know, how could he molest a child? Well, he doesn't have a conscience. Okay? He's not saved. He's not redeemed. All right? That's why the Catholic priest can do those horrible things. Say, how could Jack Hiles do what he did? Fornicating with his deacon's wife and yet up there preaching his little sermons and stuff like that. Because he was the same belief system as a Catholic. Now Catholics a lot of times will line up over here. But there are Catholics that say that they believe in Jesus. Well, then why are you continuing in your system? Who are you to judge me? You know. And we get that thing, you know, from people and stuff. A lot of my relatives, well, pretty much all of my relatives, you know, they get this thing and I believe in Jesus. You know, both my relatives and my wife's relatives, you know, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus, you know. Uh, well, why did you just use profanity? Why do you continue to go to the Babel building that you know is wrong? Why do you use new versions? Why do you listen to rock music? Why do you love television and have no conviction over this thing? Why, 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 why? And again, we're not talking about somebody who's genuinely saved and who messes up and says, oh, brother, man, I just, <sighs> I looked at a dirty magazine the other night and, oh, man, I feel so dumb. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about a genuine feeling of, of uh, I'm a sinner. I know that in me there's no good thing. We're not talking about Romans chapter 7. We're talking about people that have as a lifestyle, as a belief system, that they say, don't judge me for my sins. Don't tell me that I'm wrong. I believe in Jesus. Who are you to judge me? That's what I'm talking about. That's the group that I'm saying right there is wrong. So, like I said, I mean, we could just keep going. I could, I could run this thing for eight hours and just talk the whole time and stuff. It's it just, you know, I made this video because I reject. I want to publicly say... Um, I, I, I can't take down every study that I've ever done uh, where I talk about Lordship Salvation. I can't, I can't do that. Um, you know, I've, I've always preferred, there are some videos I've taken down over the years, but I've always preferred to leave the videos up so people can see uh, that I have myself made mistakes and uh, I'm not perfect. And if you see older videos and you hear me say, you know, try to find a good church in your area, I don't take that stand anymore. Um, uh, understanding what Babel buildings are, what church buildings are. They're, they're pagan in origin, um, and they will be pagan in the future. Uh, they have always been pagan, and I realize that there are people that have gone to them, and uh, people that are saved have gone to them, and they just... But you'll never feel peace there. Um, just like any sin that you get involved in, you'll never feel peace when you're here. You'll never feel peace. When you feel peace in your sin, 
when you don't say, well, my conscience doesn't convict me. Remember what we said earlier? Colossians 2.8. See? My conscience doesn't convict me. The rudiments of the world, you know. Uh, when you get into that type of a, a mindset, you get a Stephen Anderson. Again, I've attacked him so many times because he's so dangerous. Uh, again, one of these heavy metal rocker guys, rock and roll Satanists over here, these witches, he compared me to Stephen Anderson. And I thought, proves that they're, you know, of the same spirit there with the government goons and the spooks and whatever else that are trying to elevate Stephen Anderson to this violent extremist King James only person so that, you know, he can demonize, you know, that they can demonize all Bible believers as being like Stephen Anderson. You know, and the, the secular media down there is trying to say that Stephen Anderson's taking over the King James only movement when he hasn't done any work at all. Made one video, you know, and a couple little references to the new versions. Um, he's parroting what other people have brought out is all he is. But I, I judge Stephen Anderson. Why? You say he believes in Jesus. Well, sure he does. But you see, there are certain teachings and certain things. It doesn't matter how many times he's corrected. It doesn't matter how much proof you show him. He will never, ever repent. He refuses repentance. And again, he preaches against repentance. He says this is a false gospel right here. True salvation is a false gospel, according to Stephen Anderson. So you see, when you see that thing, belief, but no repentance. They just don't judge me. I'm not going to I'm not going to bow to this. I'm not going to submit to this. Don't judge me. You have no right to judge me. You're dealing with this. You're dealing with a false convert, a religious hypocrite. All right? You think if there's anything else I have to say? Did I cover everything? <laughs> We've been talking about this now for a while. My wife's sitting over here at the one desk. She's working on some stuff on her own and you know, it's just uh you know, Again, I mean, you know, we just we discuss the Bible all the time, and I suggest that for your home. Uh, I know some of you uh, dear Christian ladies out there, some of my sisters in Christ, you don't have a saved husband, and I'm sorry about that. I really am. Um, I know it's rough, you know, being married and sticking to the Bible, King James Bible at this time, but boy, whew, I can't imagine having a lost husband like some of you sisters do or lost wife like some of the brethren do. Um, boy, it's rough. And, uh, but you know, stay with it. You know, just, just stick with it, brethren. I mean, it's, there isn't much more time. I, I don't know. I don't know, you know, how much longer. I'm not going to make a prediction. Uh, you know, I just live with the expectation that it could be today that the Lord could take us out of here. I hope so. Um, you know, it gets mighty sickening down here on this earth. I mean, this this whole study is inspired by people that have been attacking me, and just it gets it gets wearying. You know, I just um, but uh, you know, I think that we are we've covered all the different points that we needed to cover, and uh, you know, I wanted to do just do this thing again. You know, very happy about having a chalkboard now, where I can actually write things out, and you can see the scriptures in front of you. I know a lot of people have said, you know, could you could you put PDF files of your notes and stuff? Well, my notes are often very um, confusing, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I, that's why I don't put out a PDF of each sermon, you know, that I do. Um, but I thought with this study, I just want to get the scriptures written out. And there's so many more we could go to. I mean, uh, you can just keep going and going and going. But it just has to get to the point where, as Bible believers, you know, there are certain danger areas that, that, uh, you know, when you see it, you just simply say, whoa, okay, hold on a second here. we got a false prophet trying to get to me. And one of those dangerous areas, the big one is when somebody says, accuses you or says something that's not found in the King James Bible, a term that appears nowhere in the pages of the King James Bible, and like the term Lordship Salvation, when they say that, you just simply say, uh, no, thank you, we're done. Well, you haven't even heard my arguments yet. Uh, unless you can show me from Scripture where it says Lordship Salvation or where it, um, a clear Scripture talking about what you're saying, I'm not interested. It's just as simple as that. Uh, true salvation produces a change. Definitely. There will still be struggles with sin. Absolutely. You know, down here. Absolutely. Sure. 
But there's going to be a change. Why? Because you've come to the Lord in need of a cure for your sin problem. All right. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just really do pray for strength for everyone out there. I know it, it gets very wearying for me, and I, I'm sure that the brethren out there, brothers and sisters in Christ, are, are just getting real sick and tired of things too. And uh, even just preaching the gospel as your word says to do, uh, we get attacked for that. Um, even by people who proclaim to be King James Bible believers, um, many have fallen away, Lord, and they're, and they're taking stands that they would never have taken years ago. And it's because of the false prophets that are arising to draw away disciples after them. And uh, Lord, I, I commend all of your saints out there to you and to your word, which is able to build them up. Um, I can't fight their battles for them, Lord. Uh, I, can, I can be out here as, as a preacher and show them what the Bible says and try to lead them into the, the right way. But uh, if they keep listening to false prophets, if they allow the devil to come in and deceive them, they're going to fall away too. And Lord, I just pray that they would learn the things, the basics of Scripture, and then not back off. And if somebody comes along and says, what about this, what about that? Just say, no, sorry. I'm sorry, you're not going to move me. And um, I do pray, Lord, for your people, for those who are truly saved, to stand by your word and stand by the things that they have learned and been assured of. And I just uh, pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, that's going to be it. And uh, we are going to be moving on to more important projects and like I said, I'm going to make it a policy from here on out. Uh, if any false prophets come out and um, you know attack me and say I'm teaching Lordship Salvation, all you're trying to do is hurt this ministry. Um, God is behind this ministry. Uh, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Lord knows I'm not perfect. Lord knows I've made plenty of, mis of mistakes. But I'll admit to my ex mistakes when I when I am shown Scripture. But if you're not showing me scripture to prove me wrong, then I'm not going to admit to the mistakes. I'm not prideful for saying that. I am, I, as I wrote to a sister, a uh, dear sister in the Lord, I said, I'm not a flip-flop preacher. Every time somebody, you know, uh, comes and says, well, brother, I think you're wrong on this. I'll go, oh, okay, I'll flip over to your side. And that person, somebody else comes along and says, hey, you're wrong on that. Then I'll flop to this side. And then I'll flip to this side. And then I'll flop. I don't do that. Um, I'm going to stay true to God's word. I'm going to stay true to true salvation. I'm going to stay true to the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away. I'm going to stay true to the King James Bible. You're never going to see me reading out of an NIV unless I'm attacking it, showing it's satanic. I'm going to stay true to those things. Okay? And you're not going to back me off. And if you are coming onto this channel and, uh, and you are um, attacking me personally, or if I find out that you're attacking me in your videos, um, I'm going to warn the body of Christ about you. You know, it's kind of like Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. You know, Paul wrote about that. He named him and named his profession. And by the way, Ed Fenninger, I've seen this thing years and years now. You know, he idolizes sports teams and he'll have all kinds of stuff on sports. Uh, when there's some major problems spiritually with sports and watching television, you know, doesn't seem to have a problem with that, but he can spot me as being a false preacher. Sure, sure. So uh, Ed Fenninger is going to be blocked from all my channels. I'm sick and tired of that guy. He's a hypocrite. Um, there's a bunch of others. Kevin Zacker is another one. He's gone. He's blocked. Um, you people that commented on Ed Fenninger's video, uh, you're all gone. Um, I don't have time for it. I really do not have time for it. Uh, the Lord has been using this ministry greatly, and there are people getting saved and uh, if you're going to come along and try to undermine things, and, and uh, I'm going to call you out publicly, and I'm going to block you from the channel. And you say, uh, well, you know, that's just bad and evil and, you know, blah, blah. Okay, then the Lord's going to stop me. If I'm the one who's wrong, God will stop me. You do believe that, don't you? You do believe that God, the God of the universe, can stop me if I'm wrong? And by the way, you know, like I've said, I've, I have been corrected and I have many, many videos where I've come out and said, Brother so-and-so wrote to me and I'm wrong. I'll consider certain things, okay? But if I'm not wrong, I ain't going to change. 
And I'm not wrong on this issue right here. And you're not going to back me off one inch on this subject. It isn't going to happen. I'm not teaching lordship salvation, you dirty hypocrite liars out there that have been accusing me of that. I am not teaching lordship salvation. You are using something that is not found in the pages of Scripture. Nowhere is there any kind of a saying about lordship salvation, whatever else. You're a liar. And if I see you down in the comments, you are teaching lordship salvation, you're done. You're blocked. Okay? And if you say, well, I don't agree with you, okay, then go do your own ministry. Go away. You know, why are you judging another man's servant? Why are you judging God's servant here? To his own master, he standeth or falleth. The Bible talks about that. Hey, I'm going to stand or fall compared to, you know, with my relationship with the Lord. If I am wrong, let the Lord take care of it. Why don't you pray about that? Just say, Lord, either change Brother Brian or get rid of him if he's wrong. If, if he's not wrong, change me. All right? It's as simple as that. There's not much time left to the rapture. Get busy for the things of the Lord. That's it. Thank you very much for watching.